Wake up, God damn it. Wake up, God damn it. Hey, welcome to another show. Welcome to another episode of the Ties Lounge on Show. If you haven't already, make sure you download the official app. Sign up, it's free. Become a member, subscribe, and get early con- get the content early, like this interview. You can get this interview before it gets released to the public. All right. So download the official Ties Lounge on Show app. Um, today is a you know, what's a special this is a special interview. This is a special edition, I'm going to call it. Um, my guest today, Grammy nominated, um, soul. I mean, the definition of R and B. You know, that definition of that slow music. The definition of a song talking to you when you can look at your girl in the eye mm. and the song tell you all the tell you everything. You don't even got to say nothing. Just sit there, let the song play. He is the definition of that right so we're going to find out we're going to dig off into a story a little bit find out you know more about the man behind the voice the music and uh talk about projects and we're just gonna have a great conversation man welcome to the show today alvin gary what's going on sir my brother it's an honor to be here honor to be here i know we tried this once before mm-hmm. the first has aligned it all and we're here to get at it man. no nah, man i wasn't we weren't going was Two wasn't gonna happen today. It wasn't gonna happen again today. That's right. Um, you know, despite everything, it was not gonna happen again today. We wanted to make sure we not, we got this done. Um, you know, I get a lot of interview requests, you know, mm-hmm. across my table, and I try, you know, I go through each every one. I say, okay, what's gonna be what's gonna be different about this one? What's gonna be the story behind this one? And I look at yours. I'm like, this guy has a resume. Where's this guy been at? Like, <laughs> why, why, why have we, why have you know, where's, where's this guy been at? Why is this, you know, you know? And um, when I started looking at names like people that you work, Kelly Rowland, Fantasia, Ruben, Jordan, I mean, and then they said, you know, many more, you know, um, you so this guy, it's gotta, he's gotta be official. He's got, the, you know, he's got the credibility. He's got the credentials, right? So I went on, you know, YouTube. Mm-hmm. I said, we ain't gonna, I said, forget everything else. We're gonna press play. I wanna hear the music. And I came across this record, and I've been singing this song since yesterday. And it's it just hits you. It's the, the chorus, which is the most important part of the song, mm-hmm. which is the vet, it tells the whole it tells the whole it's supposed to tell the song in, in, in its entirety in that hook and that's what he grabs from the song called By Myself yeah. oh man that that By Myself is cold because oh. I want to ask you this but before I ask you I want to say this not only could you fit that that chorus into your relationship you could fit that chorus into your friendship you could fit that chorus into your family ships yes. you could fit that chorus into your solo ship meaning into yourself so how was you able to grasp all of that in that in those couple bars <laughs> and that song by myself was it a personal experience would tell tell us about that oh man that it that chorus is literally my life wrapped up so it's it's so much bigger for me mm-hmm. than just even a chorus it's like that is the summary of my entire life mm. how i was raised it was like you hit that moment in life that says, are you going to be who you were taught to be? Mm. Right? You're grinding and you sending your records out. You got friends that's supposed to open doors. They close them. You got everybody telling you what you need to do. You when, you know that in this industry is bam, bam, mm. bam, bam, bam. And the question is, are you going to still show up for that next bam? And for me, that song was my moment that said, enough is enough i'm gonna do it with you with or without you and that was inclusive of everybody you just mentioned friends family labels banks i'm going on if i gotta go on by myself myself. (laughs) (laughs) and that's and i didn't sit down and write that song that was I, when I say didn't write it, I mean I didn't pull out a pen and pad and say, "Ooh, mm. I want to write a great song." I turned the mic on and started singing. Mm. It was good. Hold on, hold on. You just came up with a new genre. You mean that was an R and B freestyle, bro? That was a freestyle. <laughs> it, it was written. In, I lied to you not. It was in me. It just came out like, and I didn't even have the chorus in my mind when I started recording. 
I only had a feeling. I turned the mic on and press record. And mm, well, well, well. It just came out of me. I've been rejected way uh -oh. too oh. my life. Come on. I won't take no for an answer anymore. That was in my soul. When I say I turned the mic on and that was in my soul, and I was like, "Woo, what is this? And I just kept, oh, I just kept going line uh, by line by line. Mm -hmm. And when I got to the chorus, if you won't stand with me, if you won't go with me, I'm going to go on by myself. If you won't fight with me, if you won't believe with me, I'm going to walk on by myself. By myself. Hey, man, that right there. And yeah. I'm going to tell you why they hit home with me because uh, many moons ago, a long time ago, I was, I was in church. And um, the day I was, the day, one of, those, one of those Sundays, I can't remember what day, I don't even remember the pastor's name. Mm -hmm. Right? We had a guest speaker, we had a guest pastor come up, and he did a sermon. And guess what that sermon was called? Was it called by myself? Close, but Close. it all had this, it, it, it said, run with me. Mm, and at okay. the end of the sermon, he said, if I can't find, if you won't run with me, mm. if I got to, I'll run all by myself. So when I heard the words by myself, it took me mm. back yeah. to that sermon. I got that sermon on CD and okay. I used to listen to that sermon all the time because you in, in life, you got friends that will make you run by yourself. That's right. You got relationships that will make you run by yourself. And you got family That's right. <laughs> who will make you definitely <laughs> run by yourself. So when you right. said by my, and the way you, and it's almost like it was a two part course, right? Two part hook. Cause you got the first and then you, it's almost like you said by myself separately. It's like almost that was in a, a hook in its own outside mm. of the word you do you know what i'm saying yeah so when i heard i said uh, my, I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> play, that play that back hey run that play back, back. Oh, man. Man. <laughs> uh, man i let me tell you something and it's when you say hey i'm discovering just even with that song you're discovering like who is this guy where's he's been to me that's a beautiful part of my story my journey is that i you know, I had to grow to be okay with that because when that song dropped, everybody felt the way you feel. Mm -hmm. They didn't see me, right? So as an artist, you find like, I got the song, I got the song, but it didn't translate into the type of artistic growth that I was looking for. It translated into a testimony for everybody else. And so for a while, I'm like, okay, you do this to get a hit. And that's supposed to change your life. That's what you believe a hit's supposed to do. But it didn't change mine. It made me work harder. It made me have to listen to what my music meant to other people. But they, I could, like nobody knew me. They didn't keep, they didn't even care who the guy <laughs> was in this song. They right, were like, right. I'm by myself. And it, it challenged me so much as a human being, especially as an artist, to say, okay, you actually put it out there like that. So keep going. You put it out there. Keep going. And I, I made some jokes where it was like, I feel like by myself is that homeboy that always I shine you. <laughs> it's oh, like, wow. Like my name's Alvin Gary. Okay, who, who? I'm the guy that sings by myself. Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> wow, wow. That's okay. So, no lie, no lie. It didn't matter. <laughs> I, I definitely understand. I definitely understand that. It was like. You know my song, but you don't know me yet. Me, yeah. but, I, but that was my journey. Okay, keep going. Keep going. One day they'll know you. You'll have a story. Stories are written overnight. I mean, over time, not overnight. Yeah. So that Man. was part of my story. And so to, to sit here and hear you have the same reaction people had almost 10 years ago, you know, eight years ago to be exact, when I released that song and it's still fresh and new, that's amazing that I've gotten to this point where you're like, I want to talk to this guy. Where has he been? <laughs> and, I mean that's and, 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 but to be honest and I said this to you off you know um, you know right before we started mm -hmm. I, said, I can't find a bad song in the catalog so like I was going record for record I just sat back and let I sat back and just ran through the YouTube then I said let me get on Spotify cause I, let me get on Spotify I got on Spotify the app, I was on Apple I'm, like, I'm just going to let it play till all his songs are done playing talking till I get caught up where I'm doing something I can't listen 
I'm gonna let it play, and it was just boom, boom, <laughs> boom. I said, shit. I said, <laughs> but I said, and all of them have their own story. Mm. You know what I mean, individually. But that damn by myself, man. You're right. You're right. It, 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 it makes you. It, they're like it's the homeboy that you can't outshine. It, 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 it just hits, man. You 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 have you, boy. You, you whew, that by myself, man. And the, all the other records, you know, something's different. Uh, Try to get back to you. I mean, that that's what I meant when I said in the introduction about real R and B. Yeah, you would just play the record. You yeah. sit at the fireplace. You know what I mean? You, you don't want to say the wrong words. You don't know how to start the conversation. <laughs> you just let the music talk for you. And you just look like, you know, she got it. I mean, hope she understands what I'm, what's going on. And that's, <laughs> what it, <laughs> and that's what it does for me. But, you know, to go back to your point of people knowing the music but not knowing the man. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I had that same, I share that same sentiment in the media world mm. because I was doing so many interviews where people were loving the interview. They knew, you know, but they, they didn't know the they didn't know the man behind the mic who's asking the questions. Mm. Well, I dropped a documentary several years ago called Who is Taj Longino? Okay. The story of my life. Mm. Do you know what I mean? To answer all those questions. Yeah, yeah. So now you get familiar with who is he, where is he from? I used to get that all the time. So mm-hmm. I definitely understand what you mean when you know they know the material but they don't know you right and that's and honestly that's the world we live in now because everything is so fast you know mm-hmm. and to me that's that slow cooker type of thing you know when you expect people to dive in get connected most people don't have that kind of time it's like yeah i want to hear what i like let me pick and choose from that and just to get somebody's attention long enough to find a reason to want to know you it's, it's just a higher bar these days just because of the amount of information people use daily so yeah. you know the type of patience that it takes for people like yourself and myself to just stay at it and stay true to who you are and keep evolving until people that matter you know till people see you long enough to engage the product engage what we're doing without us giving up without us feeling invisible you know what i'm saying because yeah. you know, we go through that phase i went yeah. 2019 right before the pandemic to be honest with you Taj I was like how much better do I have to be because I was me this whole time so I'm asking myself how much better of a song can I write like (laughs) (laughs) you know you wrote some hits when you can ask a question like that I mean more I mean I mean more more hits so I gotta write I mean no I was was, yo I kind of had a little mini depression like like for a minute I was thinking about giving it up altogether because I was like I need to do something different if I gotta be that much better Mm. than I already am and I faced that challenge internally to where I was like, I've seen people with much less talent make it. And like you said, man, I can't find a bad record. And you know, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm being honest. Like, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like if, if, if I thought you just had one, I just would have stuck on that, on that. No, but every record I was listening to, I'm like, then my other one was, um, uh, 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 now that one, I, I'm, I'm, I got it on, got it sitting right here. I got it sitting right here. It, the, the, so I get back to you. That was my second favorite one that's just stuck with me. But all of them had something that all of them had good. Okay. All of them had the introduction, the, the start, mm-hmm. they had the beat was there. The words were not a place. It wasn't. It, you had all the elements of what a good record is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And um, that's hard to do. A lot of people don't know how hard that stuff what that is. They right. think you, you can just go in the studio and just write something in five minutes and, and it, no, to be able to consistently make the finding purposeful music mm-hmm. is not that is hard to do. Yeah. Every time you go to the studio, you gotta make one better than this one. Or you gotta you gotta make one better than that one. Then you gotta how you gonna do this one? How you gonna people don't even know scratch people don't even know how hard it is to write a hook a real right. good hook that's right that's right and so, and man i'm you bring you nailing it you are nailing it and it is such you have to be critical you have to be meticulous like i will go down to a butt and an and 
I'm that critical with the record today, but if I say but, this is what it actually means to the mind. But if I change it to and, it actually means this. So I'm literally that critical because I'm thinking about you. 10 years from now, what, a, what I want the person listening to this song to feel exactly what I intend for them to feel, to have the experience I intend for them to have, to understand exactly what I am trying to say. And I've had some great mentors as a writer and a producer who would challenge me and say, what you say right there? Well, my mind heard it because I wrote it. Even down to how, ref- how I phrase my words, mm-hmm. your brain can trick you. And, and, and I go back and re-record it to make sure a, strength, a person for the first time knows exactly what that word is because your mind will tell you, oh, I see it this because I wrote this and you're familiar with it. But the person who heard it hearing something totally different because your phrasing was off. You see what I'm saying? And so yeah. that is a part of, you know, and as a vocal producer, because I, I do work and help other artists, you know, make great records myself. It's like, what are you saying right there? But what do you think you're saying? Like, I don't understand that. And then when I went back, I thought you said something else. Let's re-record that. Let's say clock instead of clock. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, want, you want to know what that's called? Producer. A lot oh. of these people, a lot, <laughs> lot of people confuse beat maker uh-huh. with being a producer. That's right. That's right. It, it's a difference. Major it's a difference. huge, it's a huge difference. And I gotta and, give a shout out for vocal producers as well, because a lot of people don't really focus on the the benefits and of a vocal producer where you can bring in somebody on those levels. Like I'll tell the story, like even working with Joe remotely, Joe was like, Hey, I'm following your lead. And I'm like, who me? <laughs> right? But he's listening to the records that I submitted to him and said, here's how this guy has meticulously laid this out. Let me follow the pattern. You know what I mean? Or you in a studio with a singer who you may respect because you've been on, you heard him on the radio and they don't know how to do ad libs. They know how to sing a record or they may know how to perform, but in the studio, they might just run all over the place and the ad libs make no sense. So saying, oh, let's put this here, here, here. So a vocal producer for other artists is critical to making sure that that performer who may be great on stage still tells a story with their performance on the record to where folks 10 years and however long, they singing your ad lib like, go on girl. <laughs> if I say go on girl, you know what that is. Yeah, you know what it, it, is that important? And, and you know, there's an R&B artist out there. I'm not gonna say his name, but every time I listen to his songs, they sound so repetitive. Okay. That record sound like the last one. He does the same. Ooh, I almost gave it away. He he does the same thing at the same spot <laughs> on, on the record every single time. Uh-huh. And I said that's why he doesn't win. That's why his records don't really hit the way they should because he doesn't do. He doesn't have a switch up. He has a repetitive thing every song. But then you got people like a Usher. You got people like a. A key sweat or uh, 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 you know or Alvin Garrett you know what I mean like mm-hmm. you get something different every time it's not the same thing you can't do the same thing with this song that you did with the last one right right you know? I call it I call it DNA right like I always want my DNA to be a part of my records to where you you don't see DNA mm-hmm. DNA shapes right. DNA forms you it makes you who you are so you should if, if you listen to all of my records, I could point out my DNA, but you won't see me in everybody mm-hmm. else. You won't see, oh, that's an Alvin Garrett run. Or, oh, he, I know Alvin produced that because he took that person and turned him into a surrogate of his, you know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and I know, <laughs> and we, we all know that there was an age where, okay, I, the producer needed a name so they can make that money or the writer needed a name. So I need all y'all to sing my signature run, my signature line. Let me tag it because I need to get my money and I need people. This is going to build my brand, but I've taken the approaches. That's, that's not what the artist wants from me. They need my DNA. They need me to make them great because it's their show. And that's a little different. And sometimes, you know, not trying to outshine an artist might make you sit a little, sit back a little bit more. But that's just been my commitment as a writer, as an artist, as a producer. Everything that I do, my thing is let that person have, they worked hard to get that shine. It's not my job to come in and outshine another singer and right. say, 
let me put my name all over your stuff. But when it's my time, I'm a, I'm a believer. The good Lord is shining the light on me. All day. Any good, you know. And that leads me to my next question, right? So the music industry, we know is a, fin- is a, you know, it's a funny business. Uh, sometimes it's timing. Uh-huh. Sometimes it's the person that you know, uh-huh. right? Uh, and sometimes it's uh, some other things, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, a whole lot of those other things, right? Hey. Um, <laughs> See, those of us who know what them other things are, we can yeah, laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> those who know, they know. They know. <laughs> um, no, so when you, you know, cause I, inter- I interview artists that, let's say, the masses may not know of, right? Uh-huh. But they got great records. Uh-huh. They got good music. They got you know, so what is it? So what do you think has been the one thing or a few things that has kept Alvin from being uh, being seen and, and heard by the masses? What's the one thing you think that's been, because you got the material, you got everything, right? So if you mm-hmm. got the entire package, what's been missing? Um, You know, if you'd have asked me that uh, several years ago, mm-hmm. I would I would have had a long list of the why nots. But now my list is why haven't I made it, which means I wasn't supposed to make it any sooner than now. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I believe that this is my journey. This is my story because as to, as who I am today, I look at the 2019 version of me, the 2018, 2015 version of me, and I'm like, now I need people to know who I am because I finally see me right mm, maybe right. i thought i saw myself maybe i thought i was supposed to make it back then but it wasn't my time so i cannot sit here and tell you that i could go back and change those things that kept me from being successful no i am who i am because they kept me from being successful at that point in time right mm. some people some people go in television shows i got i got a homie who did that right but guess mm-hmm. what it wasn't my time i was learning what touring was about how i learned so much not being known but being close to a star who won a television show and became famous overnight i learned what to do what not to do i met so many people because it was time to learn mm-hmm. right it wasn't time to shine it was time to learn and so now having this interview i'm like man i could go hours and hours and hours if you want to listen to music you can listen for hours and hours and hours because that's the alvin garrett story so i can't tell anybody else why they haven't made it and what they can do differently other than keep going Mm -hmm. (laughs) keep going yeah because when it is your time if it's ever gonna be your time stopping is not gonna get you there That, you know what? That's that's true. That is very that is very true. He says, "Not a, it wasn't my time to shine; it was my time to learn." Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people get that. They think it's always their time to shine. That's right. Right? And they're not knowing that sometimes you got to be a student. Of this, you got to be a student before you teach. Right? You got to be a student of the game. Absolutely, absolutely. And, so I'm, I'm glad you asked me that, and I I am. Um, I had to grow into this place. This is not me. Like I said, this is not me. A couple of years ago. This is me maturing into this place to where I'm not bitter that I haven't made it yet, but I'm excited that it's happening this way, you know? And, and that's a, and that's another question because bitterness does, and especially when you're an artist, it mm-hmm. eats at you, especially yep. when you know you got, um, when you got the, when you, when you, when you know you're one of them, you know what I mean? When you know you, you got it and, and you're not just pushing some trash music, you really are giving people quality. Mm-hmm. At, a, at a high level, right? Mm-hmm. What keeps you going? What's the one thing that keeps driving you? You wake up every day, even like you said, you want to quit. I've been there, right? Yeah. So I tell you, for me, when I've had those moments where I wanted to quit, I'm going to tell you what ended up happening. I either get a phone call, text message, or I run into somebody in public. And they're like, hey, man, love the show, man. love what you're doing. And I ask them a question to test them. I said, what part, which, what, what, which one did you love? <laughs> so which, what, what interview did you like? Did you, oh, that one you did, what, uh, da, da, da. And I'm just going to keep picking their brains so I know they ain't playing with me, BSing me, right? Mm-hmm. And they just like, um, man, us don't stop, bro, don't stop. And that right there, a little bit right there, let's know, hey, 
I'm still needed out here. So what was the one, what's the one thing for you that keeps you motivated to continue to write at a high level and continue to stay motivated? You just nailed it. It's, it's understanding my purpose, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it happened. Like I learned my purpose with by myself. I accepted that my songs are meant to save lives, to touch lives. Whether I become famous, rich, whether that is a part of my story or not, don't Mm -hmm. ever stop saving lives with my song. Don't ever stop touching people with my song. And I will admit that I, you know, I got a good father. He's my pastor and he's always encouraged me. He says, son, you may never know in your lifetime the true impact of your work, but keep working. You know, so I had to hear that and get that deep inside. And that's what keeps me going now is knowing and having heard testimonies of people saying I was about to kill myself and then your song came on the radio and I changed Yeah, my I saw that. That's one of the, uh, forgot what song that was, but I that thought was that myself. was- That was by myself. That was by I thought that was, at first I thought that was something that was just- That was real. That was a real story. That's a real story. And to this day, that brother in Jackson, Mississippi is one of my most treasured followers. He, he constantly keeps me posted on how his life is going. He constantly reminds me that I saved his life. He said, fly high, brother, fly high. So if I ever thought about giving up, it was that night when he said, until your song came on the radio, I was about to kill myself, had the gun cocked. And I cried for maybe like a couple of days because that's when I realized I matter. My voice matter, my music matter. Just don't ever stop because you may not know who needs you at that very moment? Who may need your song? It ain't about you. And and honestly, taking a, a, a taking that purpose in has allowed my music to get even better. To be right. honest, like it allows it allows me to let the music in and not feel like I'm trying to sell something. Because at a time I I did I used to listen to the radio, try to research, say what they looking for. You know, as a writer, what kind of melodies are hot right now? I was doing my research, but that was just heavy on me. You know what I'm saying? But I realized, oh, people want you for you. Just do you. And if that means one person hears that song and it becomes their theme song for the rest of their life, you've made it. You've done enough. And that's the God honest truth is that that purpose keeps me moving and everything else is a blessing. It's like the cherry on top, you know, to be top 20 on the the R&B Billboard charts right now. I'm like, what? This is so cool. Like, and they ask, you want to be number one? Uh, that'll be cool, but guess what? How many more people can hear my music and be blessed by it? If number one comes with that, then that's cool. But I wouldn't trade that in. I wouldn't start writing sex records and just doing what other people think needs to be done to make it. I wouldn't trade me in for that. I wouldn't trade my voice in for that or my style for that. I don't want it like that no more. You know what I'm saying? I don't want that. So I'm going to be me, and if that's good enough for number one, I'll take it. Plus the other things you gotta do. Because yeah. <laughs> hey, because they will come knocking. <laughs> I had to throw that in mess with you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, because it hey, it's, it's real. <laughs> it's real. And if they don't know, they'll find out. Once they, you know, <laughs> if they ever get there, but you know. Right. <laughs> so like, you know, and and just to hear when I when I realized that that story was a real story. First, I'm like, okay, they just do something to, to kind of, okay, okay. I said, wait a minute, play that. I, just, I had to look at it again because that's a real video clip. Yeah. And to know that you touched him back then and know that it hit me today, that just lets you know the power of music and the power of being yourself when you're creating the music. Right. Yeah. Um, now I want to go. I want to touch on something real quick. I want to touch on just going through transitions, right, uh-huh. of, of life. So you have COVID hit, uh-huh. and and the industry did not know what it was going to do. It, it, you know, a lot of people who you who you thought <laughs> had it <laughs> didn't. There's a lot of a lot of car sales out there right now in people's driveways. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, but no, seriously, you know, COVID messed up touring, messed up. It, it, it did some damage worldwide. How did COVID affect you as an artist? And how did COVID affect you personally, positive and negative? Okay. Oh, I'm glad you asked. 
2019, like I was talking about earlier, mm-hmm. when I when I say I had my artistic depression, like I have to admit that it was actual depression. Like I was laying in the bed watching CNN in the middle of the day. And for a guy like me, that's depression. You know, not seeing what's next is depression. I've been a man of faith my entire life. Like I'm a dream. I'm that dude that's gonna run through that wall. I'm, hey, what wall, right? So to lay in bed not knowing what's next in 2019, to have to stop promoting my record because I felt irresponsible. That crushed me. You know what I'm saying? Like if I spend another dime of this money, I'm being I'm being irresponsible to my kids and my family because now I don't know if this is gonna ever pay off. That is a depressing state of wow, mind. Oh yeah, yeah. COVID didn't have nothing to do with that. That was going yeah. into 2020. So I had sat down and said, let me do my budget and see what it takes to take care of my family without music. I had never, since I left wow. corporate America in 2002, never ever considered how can I take care of my family without music? I'm just saying. And I sat down and did the numbers and I said, I can pull this off without music. Then here okay. comes COVID and everything shut down. And guess what? I was already prepared. I had already made a plan for my future that didn't include music, didn't include hustling and running and carrying equipment and saying yes to things I wanted to say no to. It was literally outside of the horrors of that period, one of the most refreshing times of my life where I I released relationships that I didn't need. I released burdens I didn't need because I didn't have to do it no more. And really find out I never, I didn't need to. I was successful enough without it. Like I had so many other business models in place that I could keep doing during the pandemic that didn't require me to be in front of somebody. And I was able to keep moving, actually grew in my business. So that's not everybody's story, but to be honest, and then I started recording what I wanted to sing. So Mm -hmm. something different this time was me singing what I want to sing. Don't care what none of y'all think. (laughs) That right. And so it's priceless. It freed me, man. Like it, it freed me, and I started doing live stream shows. I said, man, let me go harder. Why everybody else tucked tucked back wondering what's next? Let me go harder, man. We started doing productions and live streams with the band. I went in. I said, while everybody looking, let me get as much of my name and likeness mm-hmm. out there as possible. I I invested more. I took more risk because I said, at some point, people gonna get busy again. But yep. I need to plant that seed now while all my competition is kind of tucked in, right? <laughs> so that was my mindset. I went harder, but it was more, it was harder being me. I released the album, The Lightness of Love. I re- released an EP called The Awakening. I was cranking them out, man. <laughs> and I and so, to, yeah, them, some of the more of them songs I was listening to. Yeah, definitely. It, it really, it really refreshed me. Um, it, it helped me to, um, let go of what I call those those relationships that were really transactional that you told yourself were real relationships. I'm like, you know what, man? If I if I died tomorrow from COVID, how long would you think about me? Like, real talk. It made you ask those hard questions, and you start saying, "Let's go ahead, go our separate ways." Because truth be told, we was only together because of the gig. We was only yeah. together because of the the mutual benefit of our relationship, not because of each other. And I just decided I'm only going forward with pure relationship. Like, if you love me for, as a person, then we we can call each other friends. But if I'm just a benefit to you, then let's just do business. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And, and, and uh, like I was told one day, business doesn't have a heart. It doesn't have a soul. It doesn't have feelings and emotions. It's business. It's business. It's business. And business yeah. can go either way all the time you know what i mean so yeah that's 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 powerful man that you was able to figure that out because a lot of you know a lot of people just sat back and just let the wall crash you know mm-hmm. you know you as a true hustler and just a person just a true survivor you have to adapt yeah to what's going on at the time you got to figure it out because the bills ain't about to stop coming because you <laughs> you're not then they bottom such they they're right on time every month. So you gotta get creative. Um and you gotta figure out a way, you know. Yeah. Um, even on my side hustles, I made more money during the pandemic than I did any other time. <laughs> I don't know why, but it was just people were spending money. Like I, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> I understand it. I need another one to come through. I understand. I understand. <laughs> we 
we have another shutdown. <laughs> yeah, we have another shutdown, but you know, your journey um, has been one of so many people have gone through where, you know, hidden talent, right? They're not hidden, but they're hidden, right? Um, mm -hmm. And you're like, wow, man, this guy is so dope. Why, you know, but this is the way you're telling your story. You're coming from Alabama, born in Alabama, you know what I mean? And and nobody's, you know, you look, when you think about Alabama, you're not, you're not really, you don't think the industry is really looking at Alabama for, for right. talent artists, right? But, um, you know, you come out of the trenches, you, you, you know, you grow, you grew up into learning how to how to write, how to sing, right? Mm -hmm. And you have the you have uh, a father who, you know, kept you kept you faith based, and, and, and so you have you. You had the you had the foundation. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't have that, and so to me, that foundation is what's been keeping you. The foundation is what's been pushing you, because yeah. it's always been there and it's been solid since day one, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, outside, of course, you know, uh, your family and um, and everything. What what really inspires you? I was, and then also, I'm gonna add to that. Mm -hmm. I know you. I know you told me that. You know the reaction of people and how you impact lives right mm -hmm. but what really inspires you every single day i'll say right now man um during the pandemic i jumped headstrong into a more consulting role with this um, training to work prison re-entry program called the dannon project right here in Birmingham. i first got connected through a songwriting program and just their support of all my shows but they brought me in to do my songwriting program with all of the young people. And it was transformative. During the pandemic, it's actually one of the main programs that kept people engaged online because it was like, if you don't go to class, you don't get to go to Alvin's class. So it was like, it was so hot and we made a video documentary of it. Mm -hmm. And, but in that, I saw that there was more needed for me. The executive director, Carrie Pruitt, asked me, could I help more? Like she, she saw my business background, my human resources, she was like, I need you to help keep the doors open. I need you to help this agency grow. And I took on the challenge. But in doing so, I the best way to tell the story is like, if you, if, you know, you know, when Jesus walked through the crowd and everybody was like, yeah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then there's this woman who heard about him and she was like, ooh, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, if I can get close enough to that guy, I'll be made whole. And Jesus was not expecting to be touched. Everybody was touching but he wasn't expecting to be touched like that. That's my experience with the Danny Project. I was not expecting to fall in love with a bunch of dudes from gangs and, and cars. I didn't come up on that side of the railroad, but man, they touched me. So they let me ask you, not to cut you off, but let me ask you, how are you able to relate to them? Where's your connection? So, so you know, because Sometimes they say, if you're not from the street, you can't tell me, you know, like, ooh, ooh. but how do you connect with them and relate to them to where they buy into, where they buy into Alvin when Alvin's not from where they're from? I'm glad you asked me that because I thought the same thing. Never expected it, never would have expected it because you wouldn't think that people, like you have credibility, <clears throat> but they told me like, bruh, yeah, you, you here to lift us. You, you showing me, you tell me what's right. The, the, the world the world we know only see one side you see all sides you you check us when we wrong you always fighting for us you never lie to us bro I, I just came in as me never knowing that I had credibility and that's the misconception is that you because you can relate you can also elevate no that ain't what they told me mm, they like you I elevated said. you taught me how to be a man cause mm -hmm. you brought me something I never had so the credibility came from them when they told me this is what you mean to us. My nickname is Pops. Okay. Because they like you OG, like you don't you don't play. You you got that smile but you be cutting heads. So like, <laughs> <laughs> they said you about your business, you don't play. And those are those principles. That loyalty, that trustworthiness is from is a street concept that they recognize in me, but they had to educate me. Honestly, I listened. I was like why me like I, I ain't tatted up I no so I listen to them so I'm only telling you what they told me so you're credible real credible because we believe you love us and you you help us 
you know, you don't see just one side. You don't just see us the way everybody else does. Right, so. right. right. And that inspired my latest project and inspired my latest music. Um, and it changed me. It changed me because I never would have said, let me go target 18 to 24 year old black guys that's been in jail, been in gangs. I wouldn't have thought they was checking for me. They the ones asked me to do the music. They like, man, can you make more of that by myself type stuff? They were telling me I was in jail listening to that record. That kept me from ending my uh. life in jail. So these are testimonies from my people that I didn't know even was checking for me. So every day I find time to give to that, to be a part of that. And it has actually inspired my whole next project, which is called Songs for, for the Yard. <laughs> right, mm, I like that. S F T Y, which you is it stands for safety. And my man's one of my guys, Nolan. He said, he said, pops, the yard, the the, gu the guards turn the guns away. They don't point the guns on the yard. He said that's that sixty minutes where you get a taste of freedom. You know you ain't free yet, but just a taste of freedom. And that's what my next project is about. Is all of us finding our yard, that space where we can get a taste of freedom maybe not all our problems go away but just a, a way to get it out maybe just a, a way to breathe and get let the sun hit your face through enlightenment you know what i'm saying so <laughs> that's <laughs> that's why that's the space i'm in right now um and i gotta give a shout out to all my people um and i'm actually taking that on the road i'm going to other places getting invited to other cities to bring my songwriting program to at-risk youth who through songwriting and through uh, that connection are helping them see and get some of that anger out of them. Teach them through music how to talk yeah. about your anger. I let them come in, man, get, give it all to me. Lay, lay it out the way you do it. Cursing, grind, everything you would say, but can I teach you to remove it and still not lose your story? Mm. Can I teach you to remove the bitches in the holes and the guns and the blazing and the blood, but yet still feel your pain? And they do it. They do. Wow. They say, ah, what I'm really trying to say is this. Okay, well, let's write the song minus the violence, minus the misogyny, minus that, and we can still hear your pain. We can still hear your experience without that. It's a choice. And it, the, the, the experience is remarkable when you give a person not only choice, mm -hmm. but when you guide them to how to implement that choice and then sit back and hold it in their hand like damn that's still hot damn that's hot you want, you want to know man you want to know why i know that you, you, you this is your it's because you it's ever since i asked you this question you done had an extra bounce in your answers <laughs> that's the, you, you move it i said okay yeah this is this is what drives me every day this yeah. is what does that's beautiful man that's beautiful yeah, yeah that's, that's it's beautiful. real it's, it's pure so <laughs> yeah um you know, let me let me piggyback off that real quick with this question. Um, in today's music industry, right? You, mm -hmm. you know, technically, what you do is your style is what they would consider to be out of date because everything's more up tempo and mm -hmm. almost like a pop style record with, with rap. But you stay, you stay right there at the core of what R and B really is. Mm -hmm. What is your advice to the young generation who wants to? deliver that type of old school R&B but feel compelled you know almost like uh, because that's not what R&B has been for some time now uh -huh. what would your advice be to them um I'm, I wouldn't tell people not to conform I wouldn't advise young artists not to conform to what people want mm -hmm. so I I in some cases and like what we what I learned to teach the young people you have an individual plan for your life, you are an individual. Assess your set of circumstances. Don't you're not anybody else. God did not create us all equal. He created us all independently and individually. So what is your story? What is your path? And if your path includes replicating something that works, let's consider that, right? Mm. I wouldn't tell you don't do that. Be yourself, but being yourself might not pay off in a certain amount of time that you can afford. Let me tell you something. I am a hard worker. I am a I'm a pretty decent businessman. I had to pay the way to be this guy and not sell out. I had to make sure I had enough in the in the tank to say month to month to month to month, I can stay true to my values in spite of that not being the quick way to make it, okay? Mm. So I had all kind of other business things going on that could keep the bills paid, that could keep me able to invest in myself, 
well, some people might need to make it a little faster. Some people might need that record deal. Well, that's fine, but that's your journey. I'm not here to tell you not to do what it was catchy, right? I'm not. I'm not going to do that because that's unfair to try to tell somebody not to do that. But I also would say, if this is what you want to do, if you want to go back to that, there's an audience for it. There are people, and there's young people who want to mellow out and. Man, I, <laughs> what do you say? Man, I, that's my light up music right now. That's my kickback music. I don't want that. I don't hear that right now. I'm about to pop off. I need to hear that album. Gary, give me some of that. Ooh. I was, that what they tell me. That what I heard. Oh, man. Oh, something. <laughs> man, I need to lay back, man. I, I need to get something off my chest, but let me turn you on. Let me listen to your music because that's what I listen to when I want that. Right, you know right. And so I think that's the beauty of the story is that some, it's, the world is so big, but it's so small. Be you and find the people that want you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. that's what I encourage. Like, find the folk that want you, but be you long enough for enough people to see you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. You know, um, you know I, I'm truly... I'm glad I did this, right? Mm-hmm. On today, which whatever you know what I had going on earlier. Um I needed this. You know right. what I mean? So for today, you know what I mean? It, it, it was definitely needed to get my mind off of it. Then also, you know, um I just love good stories, man. Mm-hmm. And you definitely get and you definitely it's, it's nothing more priceless than a good story. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It is. And so you definitely have, but I got a couple more questions though. Let's go. Let's go. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> now, I know that, um, you know, we're not in the era of CDs anymore. That's been long gone and streaming has been a big conversation mm-hmm. in, the, in the entertainment business right now, especially with the strike. Um, and now artists are looking at it like, hey, we might have to step out in there and strike as well because we don't know how these streaming numbers are going. That's what right. is your thoughts on streaming? What are your, um, how has streaming, you know, affected you and, um, you know, some people don't don't like Yo Gotti just did an interview the other day with EY, EYL, and he doesn't he doesn't have a he doesn't mind streaming, even though he came from the CD era where he mm-hmm. made more money in CDs and streaming. He does, I don't mind it because he his feelings were you can always go back to my record anytime you want at that very moment, mm-hmm. but if you don't got the CD around or the CD cracked, or if it's scratched up, right. how many times are you really gonna go buy the CD again? That was just, that was, you know, that was his point of uh, premise. So I was like, you know what, that makes sense. But if you sell a million streams, you should have a million dollars or somewhere close to it, right? So what is your thoughts on the whole streaming? I I feel like, because I'm, I'm my background is in business management. Like I study finance, marketing, business in college. So I think like a business person. So I'm just being honest. I'm a musician, an artist, but I'm probably one of the two percent of people that look at the numbers and <laughs> that kind of right. like, like I, they would call me a suit. They should something. look at the numbers, right? They maybe right. half of them would go broke. Right, but you cannot stop progress. Like say, for instance, let's say, man, I remember when hands-on meeting was the way to do when you had to shake people's hands. Now you yeah. got this boom. Well, change requires evolution. And so at the end of the day, you know, I wasn't blessed and fortunate enough to make it in the 90s or the 70s or the 80s. If I was living back then being this guy, oh, I'd be filthy rich. My grandkids be filthy rich. I'm just saying. But I wasn't. I wasn't even this guy in the 2000s, 2000 to 2010. Right. Ruben Stutter sold two million records in 2004. So you're talking less than. You're talking less than 20 years selling 2 million CDs. This is So I've seen that, but that wasn't my time. You know what I'm saying? And so you, you're you not going to replicate an era that is gone. You got people out here touring right now that are 60, 70, 80 years old. And their fans go see them over and over again. A lot of them barely walk, but they singing songs that they put out 30, 40 years ago. Right. And, and, and those guys may not make any money streaming, but guess what? They got hits. They got hits and they get on the road till they almost die <laughs> and they making money. So what I'm saying is they're evolving too. 
Mm-hmm. They're not complaining. Well, I would love to be. I remember when, but they be like, let me hit on this stage because my fans still alive. They still willing to pay 50, 100, 200, 200, 300. And you see all these older artists getting back on the road touring because their fans ain't dead yet. Right? Their fans ain't dead. Music ain't dead. So my thing is, yes, it's going to require some legislation. It's going to require some, you know, conversation, but it don't, you can't be mad about it either because at the end of the day, there's no music union like there is for the writers and the right. actors. It's, it's fair game. It's the wild, wild west. So there's no governing body for music. There's no governing body for writers where everybody going to do the same thing at the same time. Let half the industry pull back and strike. The other half going to come in and swoop it up. That's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. You got you got music unions in certain markets like L.A., New York. Those unions are operable. But every small town like Alabama, say, bro, you better get it. <laughs> and you better stay at it. And so I'm, I'm just saying that to say this. I do feel that more needs to be done. But until that's done, keep streaming. That's how I say keep streaming. Take mm-hmm. advantage of the exposure you get. Make sure you got more to offer than just a song. Make sure there's a story to go along with the song where you can diversify and sell some other stuff, right? Because if you listen to my song and it makes you buy $300 worth of other product, you ain't buying no $300 CD. But what else are you selling besides the song? And that pushes a lot of artists to have to do more than maybe. Be creative. You got to be creative on a business. Yeah. So any new projects what we got going on? Any so, new show? Any, are you going on tour? What, new tours, new projects. What we got? Yes, yes, yes. This new project that I'm hoping to release before the uh, before October uh, makes it safety songs for the yard. Uh, be honest with you, I was going to release it sooner, but then the single took off, and I was like, "Whoa, this is new. Let me hang. Let me kind of hold tight." <laughs> and let this audience let me let me see how this thing gonna roll so I, I i've honestly been holding off on releasing because the single has been performing so well on the charts um i am putting some travel dates together i have as an artist i have never toured as an artist now i've been on the road as a musician as a musical director but i've never actually toured as a solo artist so i've done a lot of spot dates I've been performing a lot of weddings, a lot of corporate gigs. I've been busy. But as an artist where people are coming out to see me, that's the new frontier for me. So I'm putting some dates together. Um, Things like this are going to help continue to help people discover me so that when I come to town, you know what I'm saying, they can see me. But I'm anticipating that late this fall, early 2024, that I can answer, yes, I'm on the road, I'm touring. And so, but I expect to have that project out moving, um, following behind this great single till I get back to you. All right, all right, Alvin Garrett, Todd's Longino Show. One last thing: three keys to success. Three keys to success. <laughs> all right. First is faith, right? right. Faith, faith is key. Uh, what you believe, what you see in your mind, in spite of what you see with your eyes, mm-hmm. is absolutely key to success because most of what you see with your eyes will tell you something otherwise, okay? So I believe that faith is the beginning. Work ethic, right? Work ethic is absolutely key to opening up faith because faith without works is dead. So I gotta- Right believe- now, talk to him. <laughs> I gotta believe in what I'm work. I gotta believe in what I see, but I gotta bust my ass to get there, okay? Um, <laughs> and <laughs> and patience. I'm going to say patience as my third key to success is patience is not a soft thing. Patience is power. As one of my old mentors used to say, patience is power, meaning that you can stay around long enough for something to materialize. You know what I'm saying? If you plant, if you you go plant a garden and you impatient, you ain't gonna have no food. You see what I'm saying? And so. You have to stay patient long enough for your faith to actually work. So honestly, those are the three keys of, to, of success. Start with what you believe, start with faith and be crazy with it. Like don't don't play it safe. Number two, work your ass off. Get up every day and outwork everybody else. Because I didn't I wasn't born a saint. 
I wasn't, I was, I had, I'm a bass player. I get down with the best of them. Mm. I, I hired a vocal coach when I decided I want to sing. So I sing better now than I did when I first took it seriously. Okay. Yeah. So I work for this voice that I have now. I work to learn vocal control. I put in the hours behind the scenes to be able to stand on stage with the best of them and say, this is me. I earned that. I did. And I was patient long enough for it to pay off. All right. Now, you may know, you just, every time you talk, you give me another question. <laughs> so when it comes to performing mm -hmm. and really just stand up there singing, mm -hmm. say, you know, some people sing, some people sing, can sing. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you had to, you say you can stand up there with the best of them, how long could you perform with that voice? Like, I've seen people go 30 minutes straight, no no stopping. They, they got their voice trained that cold. How mm -hmm. long can you, can you go perform on stage? Like, how long with, could you? Like, without feeling like I'm exhausted or yeah. whatever? Yeah. <clears throat> I can do a 90 minute show, come off, if I'm not outside in the heat, mm -hmm. I can do a 90 minute show go take a break and still feel like I can do it again. Right. <clears throat> and, and that's because I prepare myself. I exercise almost every day. I run, I don't drink sodas. Like I'm disciplined with my diet. Um, and I've gotten to the place where I understand when my throat is inflamed, how to hit my runs without straining my voice to where I'm singing from my diaphragm, like the tech, the technical things that give you longevity if my body can hold up and I'm not dehydrated from sweating too much, I can get back up there and sing again at the end of the night. I don't feel like I'm just so beat down vocally or physically after a 90 minute show. 30 minutes is like a breeze. 60 minutes, I'm like, can we get back at it? <laughs> I'm like, can we get like, we we off too soon. But yeah. I always pace myself and a part of my show is the dialogue with my audience. So I strategically place my breaks through that engagement and crowd engagement. So I'm also resting, but I'm entertaining with a different type of thing other than just singing. So um, that helps me create that longevity with my shows as well. All right, well, hey, you know, one thing about the Taj Longino show, our goal in each, each interview is to entertain them and educate them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and once again, I mean, we've done that. I, I, you can't. You didn't learn nothing from this one. I don't know. I really don't know what to tell people. But um, you know, Alvin Garrett, man, Taj Longino show. I want to thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Uh, once again, I definitely need it. As much as you know, you appreciate it. I need it as well. You know what I mean? So um, go out there, get the new music. If he's coming to your town when he starts touring, make sure you, you know, what I mean, you take your hard on money and go and go listen to some good music. Um, my, my suggestion if you have not heard by myself my favorite joint uh, I'm going to listen to it again here in a few minutes go pull that up on YouTube Spotify Apple and press play man, and let it talk to you <laughs> and then go and then go from that one to your second favorite which is Till I Get Back to You Till I Get Back to You yeah Till I Get Back to You man and, man he just actually you didn't got to do that just just hit play on his name let the music run and then you, you know, I mean, there it is. That's all I did, and I just found it. This I did not find a song where I was like, yeah. I was like, man, this no more. This dude was rocking. This dude was cool, okay. Uh, and I'm a hip hop dude. Like my yeah. my barber is R and B first. I'm I'm hip hop first, R and B second. He's okay. R and B first and second, then hip hop. <laughs> right. And <laughs> I'm going to send him this because he loves, like he's. The epitome of R and B, like he loves that. Okay. Okay. So me and him, you know, he's always said, "You only like R. Kelly." That's a good choice, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <They're going wrong. laughs> <I'm> right. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but you know, so when I do come across, for me, me being all rap and I listen to R and B, but when I rap is my first, so when I do come across some good R and B. Trust me, I wear it out. I'm tired of That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm honored. I, hey, straight up, I'm honored. And I just need me about 100,000, 250 more thousand Taj Longinos. <laughs> <I> can, <laughs> who equally is passionate about streaming. <laughs> so, man, I, I'm grateful. I'm, I really appreciate you uh, sharing this opportunity with me. And uh, and I look forward. And we're going to stay in touch as well. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. All right, everybody. Thanks again. And uh, like I always say, each one, reach one. 
teach one. And thank you for watching the Taj Longino show with me and Alvin Garrett. Make sure you follow him on social media. But I said all that and I didn't say that part. Make sure you follow him on social media, Instagram. Are you on Twitter? Absolutely. At okay. the Alvin Garrett. Just put an at and a V in front of Alvin Garrett. At the Alvin Garrett. And you find me out or go to alvingarrett.com. Yeah, I was just getting ready to say that, right? <laughs> you just go on the website yep. and there it is. <laughs> you get it all right there. Thank you for watching the Tyus Lounge No Show. Wake up, goddammit. Wake up, goddammit.